Have you or a loved one ever found yourself saying something like this? Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Or this? Yeah, come on. Yeah, this, is, this is, there has never been a conspiracy in this country. Or this? And conspiracy theories are bullshit. Then you might be suffering from cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance? What's that? The theory of cognitive dissonance was first posited by American social psychologist Leon Festinger in 1957 to explain the discomfort and mental stress that we feel when our beliefs, ideals, or values don't match up to reality. Festinger's theory states that when people are in a state of dissonance, that is, when their beliefs or values don't match up with their behavior or experiences, they will adjust those beliefs or values, or even adjust their perception of reality, in order to achieve consonance. Furthermore, Fessinger showed that people will actively avoid situations or information that might challenge those beliefs and values in order to avoid dissonance. This theory helps us to understand how someone can both deny and admit the existence of a conspiracy in the very same breath. I don't believe in this notion of some sort of secret societies controlling people. But, of course, in any political system, there are sort of over-the-table and under-the-table arrangements. Or how someone can argue for and against the idea that the owner of a publication is essential in determining what its reporters can or can't talk about. I think it's relevant who owns Salon, and I think it's relevant who owns you know, any journalistic outlet, and the reason for that is obvious, that employees who work... The, the, the reason is because people who work for companies know who signs their paychecks and know that the work they do ought to be pleasing to the people who sign their paychecks. Uh, let's talk about The Intercept. Glenn, talk about the launching of this new website today, together with Jeremy and Laura, what you're doing with The Intercept, what your plans are. Sure. So, you know, it was only, I think, four months ago or so that we first had conversations with Piero Midiar, who is the uh, publisher of the site through First Look Media, about working together. Jeremy, Laura, and I were off in one corner planning our own media site, and he was off in another planning his, and we realized that we could work together effectively. Or how someone who claims to have studied an institution can deny that it was the product of a conspiracy that was admitted to by its conspirators. Is the Federal Reserve a conspiracy theory? A lot of people in Washington are starting to believe that. I don't think so. It's a long-standing institution that's designed to stabilize the economy and whether it mis makes mistakes or not, works or not, it's, uh, it's not a conspiracy. Secrecy was so tight that all seven primary participants were cautioned to use only first names to prevent servants from learning their identities. Years later, one participant, Frank Vanderlip, president of National City Bank of New York and a representative of the Rockefeller family confirmed the Jekyll Island trip in a February 9, 1935 edition of the Saturday Evening Post. I was as secretive, indeed as furtive as any conspirator. Discovery we knew simply must not happen or else all our time and effort would be wasted. If it were to be exposed that our particular group had got together and written a banking bill, that bill would have no chance whatever a passage by Congress. Or how someone can claim that if 9-11 had been an inside job, it would be the greatest event in the history of American politics, and simultaneously an event of no significance whatsoever. Uh, did they plan it in any way or know anything about it? This seems to me extremely unlikely. I mean, for one thing, they would have been insane to try anything like that. Uh, for, if, if they had, it's almost certain that it would have leaked. You know, it's a very poor system. Secrets are very hard to keep. So something would have leaked out, very likely. And if it had, they'd all have been before firing squads, and that'd be the end of the Republican Party forever. You know? And it just, it just doesn't make any... I mean, even if we're true, which is extremely unlikely, who cares? You know? I mean, it doesn't have any significance. Indeed, 9-11 represents one of the greatest examples of cognitive dissonance in our own era. 
The public was so traumatized by the reporting of the events of that day that they have become emotionally invested in believing in the official account of those events. Um, and about a week later, I read a lengthy article by Professor Griffin um, about why he believes the official account of 9-11 cannot be true. And it was a very well-researched article. I was in my office at the time. I sat there and I felt my stomach churning. I thought maybe I was going to be sick. And I leaped out of my chair and ran out the door and took a, a long walk around the block, around several blocks, um, and just broke down. I understand now that what was happening was my worldview about my government being in some way my protector, almost like a parent had been dashed and uh, it was like being cast out into the wilderness I think is the closest way to describe that feeling and I sobbed and I sobbed felt like the ground had completely disappeared beneath my feet and and I knew at some point during the walk that I knew that I was going to have to become active in educating other people about this that there was that for me to retain any sense of integrity, I was going to have to take some action. I couldn't just let something like this go. When confronted on this subject, victims of cognitive dissonance will often become abusive and angry, lashing out verbally. 9-11 was not an inside job. It was an Osama bin Laden job with 19 people from Saudi Arabia. They murdered 3,000 Americans and other farmers, including over 200 other Muslims, and we look like idiots, folks, denying that the people who murdered our fellow citizens did it when they are continuing to murder people all around the world. But, but you know, you're, see, this is the problem sometimes with government. Hey, do we have some fucking security in this building? Or do I have to come over and pick this guy down? As a number of practicing psychologists, psychiatrists, and counselors have explained, these responses are a natural defense mechanism when we are faced with something threatening to our worldview. So whenever we say, I refuse to believe, we can be sure that the evidence that's coming our way is not bearable and that it's, going, it's conflicting with our worldview much too much. Denial protects people from this kind of anxiety. As I thought about all of these responses, I realized that what is common to every one of them is the emotion of fear. People are afraid of being ostracized, they're afraid of being alienated, they're afraid of being shunned, they're afraid of their lives being inconvenienced, they'd have to change their lives, they're afraid of being confused, they're afraid of psychological deterioration, they're afraid of feeling helpless and vulnerable. And they're afraid that they won't be able to handle the feelings that are coming up. None of us want to feel helpless and vulnerable. So we want to defend ourselves. And the way we often do that is with anger. So then we become angry. And when we become angry, then we become indignant we become offended. We want to ridicule the messenger. We want to pathologize the messenger. And we want to censor the messenger. If these symptoms describe you or someone you know, you may be suffering from cognitive dissonance. Those suffering from such dissonance might be conditioned to expect some form of medication to be available to repress these symptoms, but this too is a lie that must be confronted. In truth, the only thing that can overcome this dissonance is to admit to yourself that you've been lied to and to inform yourself about those lies. For more information on the truth about 9-11, Big Pharma, the American police state, the NATO war agenda, Gladio B and false flag terror, and a range of other subjects that the public has been lied to about, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and visit BoilingFrogsPost.com. This has been a public service announcement from the Corbett Report, confronting cognitive dissonance, one report at a time.
This video is brought to you by the subscribers of BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information on this and other topics, please go to BoilingFrogsPost.com. For more information and commentary from James Corbett, please go to CorbettReport.com.